All right, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to today's Heroes Connect Military to Manufacturing event. My name is Katie Bowerman, and I'll be moderating today's event. I'm a senior program manager with the Manufacturing Institute. And I oversee our virtual Heroes Make America military skill bridge training programs, as well as moderate virtual events like this. So today we're here talking with a company that's been around for a very long time um, and has been connecting the world around us with a variety of sustainable innovations through all their different business areas and brands, which you will learn about today. So this company is one of our Heroes Make America partner companies, Atlas Popco Group. I'm so excited to have you all learn more about how this company will be part of your next chapter in your career. So before we move on to our speaker and uh, introduce, uh, when I come on and introduce Paul, I want to go over some guidelines before I do that. So first, the event is being recorded. I want to make sure that we have a clean recording. So just it's going to be part of a recap email um, that's going to be sent out after the event. So part of that is please be muted throughout the presentation to minimize any background noise. However, I do encourage you to be an active participant. Utilize that chat feature during the presentation. Drop in any questions that you have. Um, we'll do some Q&A at the end. We'll come on. I'll read your questions from the chat box and we'll get those all answered during that portion. So this is your chance to connect with industry leaders um, like these folks here that we have here today from Atlas Compo. So let's practice that chat box before we move on to the next uh, section. If you can go in the chat box, put in the location of where you're going to be job searching. So if you want to drop in city and state, region, um, open to location, whatever it might be, feel free to drop it in the chat box so our presenters can go ahead and see that. So while you're working on it, I do want to briefly highlight the Manufacturing Institute's Heroes Make America Military Skill Bridge Program. We have many of our students um, on this call today, but we also have other military affiliated folks, company representatives, community partners who are joining us. Um, for those of you who are not familiar with Heroes Make America, we are a DOD approved skill bridge program and we're open to transitioning service members, reservists, guardsmen, veterans, military spouses, um, and we provide a variety of certification trainings equipping our folks with rewarding careers um, in the manufacturing and supply chain. So our students learn a variety of topics to include things like safety, quality practices, technical trainings like electrical, mechanical, pneumatic training. We also have logistics and warehouse distribution training. So lots and lots of training going on. You can see here our program managers, the different tracks that we offer, as well as our, as well as our upcoming class states um, that we have coming up. So we'll drop in our contact information. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out and reach out to any one of us. But you can also email heroes at nam.org if you want more information. All right. Uh, so another thing, uh, Heroes is a very dynamic program. Uh, in addition to our SkillBridge offerings, we have a variety of other virtual events that we that we host. So we have these weekly Heroes Connect events. We have a better learning series. We have quarterly virtual career fairs. We'll drop in those upcoming events and registration links in the chat box. So the main one I do want to focus on is our upcoming virtual career fair. Our registration has gone live. The event is this Friday, February 23rd, 11 to 2 Eastern. Make sure you adjust for your time zone. If you have not already done so, this is your time to dust off that resume, get it uploaded as part of your registration. This event is so fantastic because it's industry specific. So you can focus on companies in the manufacturing and supply chain industry. So these folks are hiring for so many different types of positions um, and they're very much ready to meet you. So please go ahead and register for that. Your resumes do go directly to the employers. You can see here the 26 companies that we have listed um, and they're looking forward to talking with you. So all right, that's enough about Heroes Make America. Let's move on to our featured presentation. I'm gonna go ahead and pass it off to Paul Humphreys. He's the Vice President of Communication and Branding at Atlas Copco. So let me go ahead and take down my slides and then Paul, the floor is yours. You can share yours. Thank you very much. Give me just a second here. So hopefully, he says, um, it should just be coming up now. Oh, let me one second. Change that. If I pull that. Hang on a second. Look at that. We worked on the seamless handover for, for hours, and then we uh, we won a seamless, uh, uh, as I hoped. Give me a second, and then it's going to be right here. Uh, system resources. That's not a good message to get, was it? Uh, there we go. So I think now it has come up, right? You can see my screen okay? Yes. Get rid of that yourself. message. Excellent. You might just get to see your picture, your video. It's uh, maybe it turned, did it turn it off? Let me put it on again. It says I've got low system resources. There we go. That's better. Okay. Go. 
So imagine the last 30 seconds didn't happen and that, that handover was seamless. So thank you, uh, Katie, so much for the warm welcome as always. Uh, please don't adjust your audio. There's nothing wrong with it, unfortunately, or fortunately, depending on your point of view, I do sound like this. So as you might have guessed, I'm originally from uh, the UK, um, uh, based now in Charlotte, North Carolina, been there for, for 15 years or more. Uh, three American boys, I'm proud to say, uh, are mine these days. So maybe one day they, they follow in your footsteps as well. Um, military has been a, a big part of my life. I, I mentioned at many of these uh, events that my brother-in-law was, a, 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 it was, he is now a veteran himself, but he was in three para, the, the parachute regiment. So he actually was over at Fort Bragg as it was back in the day, Fort Liberty now on many occasions, jumping uh, with folks from the US Army. So I know what you go through and a couple of quick thank yous, really. Number one, of course, thank you so much for your service. And, and number two, thank you for being here today. And let us introduce um, Atlas Copco Group. Uh, one of my colleagues is also on, uh, Amy, who, who is a, a direct recruiter with one of our business. So she can answer sort of the, the direct questions when it comes to jobs. And then uh, I'm also uh, hoping to be joined by one or, or maybe even two of our veterans who, who will join uh, a little bit later, if not already on the call. So uh, with introductions kind of done, let me jump in. So, um, you know, first thing is that it's actually our birthday today. Would you believe it? So this is a, a picture from uh, exactly one year ago. This is us opening uh, the NASDAQ uh, stock exchange current CEO in the middle. I say current CEO, he's retiring actually. Uh, and the guy next to him on the right is replacing him within a couple of months. So a new kind of, uh, let's say, era for Atlas Copco. And uh, a quick fun fact, as of February 2024, we're actually the 213th most valuable company in the world. So the way that they base that is your number of shares times the cost of the shares. So based on that, apparently we're worth around 76 billion today. So, you know, just to give you a size of the of the group, uh, and it is very much a group, which is which is what I'm going to explain over the, the next couple of slides. So prior to this year, really, um, uh, this was the group. We've been compromised of, of over 60 great brands. Uh, many are present in North America. Uh, some are regional, some are global, uh, and some you might recognize. Chicago Pneumatic kind of towards the bottom left is one I always like to mention. Quincy Compressors, uh, another great company, Edwards, uh, Leibold. So a lot of brands. And what we did is that um, the Atlas Copco blue logo, as I call it, if you like, basically that was the logo that was used for the group and a product brand prior to 2024. So the big change now is that you see at the top, we are the Atlas Copco group. We've kind of separated, if you want, our corporate brand uh, and uh, with our with our product brand. So that's, you know, you might have seen the blue logo before in the slides for this one. You've seen that Atlas Copco group logo now. So I just very much wanted to explain uh, the difference. And over the course of this presentation, I will talk, I'm talking on behalf of all of these 60 brands as the group so when we look at our jobs when we talk about our opportunities uh, it applies to all 60 of these great brands um, and you know we see at the bottom there we like to say you know unique uh, individual standalone brands uh, and, and and as I mentioned the blue brand is still very much uh, at our core so what do we do? So, you know, um, if you look at this, we say every day across the United States and around the world, Atlas Copco products are working to produce just about everything we need and consume. Solutions include compressors, vacuum pumps, industrial tooling, and portable power uh, equipment. And what that looks like, you know, if you look at this slide here, we make screwdrivers, but not the type of screwdriver that you would buy at Home Depot. Uh, we make uh, compressors, but again, not the sort of compressor that you would buy at Lowe's. We make vacuum pumps, but not the sort of vacuum pumps that, or the sort of vacuums that we, you would use to... Uh, to clean up around the house. So very much heavy industrial equipment, sophisticated technology. Our business, like any other, has gone through a massive transformation with digitalization, with high tech, with connectivity. So, you know, again, the four kind of core areas, air compressors, uh, vacuum pumps, industrial tooling, and portable power equipment. 
Uh, so, you know, a, a fun fact on uh, if you're driving, I say fun fact, perhaps, you know, it's not fun uh, because it's construction. So, you know, perhaps nobody wants to be associated with delays on a highway. But next time you're going down a uh, highway, I-77 for us here in Charlotte, you know, just if you're stopped or uh, take a look left or right. And if you see those yellow machines, they could be a compressor, could be a generator. Uh, that's what Atlas Copco does. We provide those portable power solutions to construction. And those products are actually made right here in Rock Hill, South Carolina, which is the office where where I'm sitting today. So you can tell your friends, tell your family. If you spot one, you can send me a picture of it. Many people do. Somebody uh, took a, a quick snapshot of one outside the White House just a couple of days ago, actually. So people are, you know, and these are people that I know, not people that work in the company, you know. So please, if you spot one and it looks fun, do do send me a picture. And then the industries, we'll, we'll touch a little bit more on this, but, you know, the, the brands that I've talked about, you know, they're covering uh, electronics, they're, they're, they're covering semiconductor, automotive assembly, construction, medical is a huge part of our business. One of our brands, Beacon Medeus, uh, does a lot of the air and gas systems in hospitals all over the US. So, you know, if you uh, ever find yourself in, in a hospital room, look behind you, look at the equipment. And if you see the words Beacon Medeus, then that's also part of Atlas Copco. So, and, and for me, you know, I, I've been in the company just to share my story quickly. This is my 24th year. Uh, I, I've, I've worked and lived in, in four different countries. Uh, I've had nine distinctive missions. I keep saying they keep trying to find something I'm good at and giving me a chance. And maybe there's a little bit of truth in that, but the company has been really, really good to me. Um, and, uh, you know, so the, the best part about the job is going into all of these industries and seeing how things have made. I've been fortunate enough to be in, you know, the BMW plant. I've been fortunate enough to be in electronics plants. Um, one of my favorite videos I ever did was at the Gerber a baby food processing plant which is up in michigan i forget the city but it's in a fairly remotish part of michigan we were up there you know making uh, uh how air compressors turn apples into apple sauce so you know this, this is the greatest thing about working for our company is that you don't you know you're not in one in industry our products are used across multiple and you really get to see how they're working and and, and how they interact um you know, with that in mind, I'll go to perhaps some of the, the videos at the end, uh, or, or let's say to look at it, but just about everything you see in this picture was made with the help of our products. On the little link, it will tell you more about the application. So, you know, you can see the, the chips. So uh, nitrogen air is used from Atlas Copco to put puffs of nitrogen into chip bags before they seal, helps them keep a lot longer, uh, maintains the freshness and the quality. The plastic bottle, it's a, it's a very interesting application how they make those bottles, right? So they start with a small kind of uh, mold, uh, you know, it may be about three inches long, dome piece of plastic, uh, the preform as they call it, and then they have their molds for the different bottle shapes. So they put the preform inside a mold and then they puff a very small amount of very, very high pressure compressed air into that piece, into that uh, preform and it blows out and expands to the shape of the bottle. And that's how those plastic bottles are made basically by injecting compressed air. Uh, many, many other applications, you know, we do pumps, which, uh, you know, um, whenever there's uh, unfortunately a, a natural disaster, many of our products are used in that. We, we have very large pumps that can take water away. We have portable power generation. Uh, vacuum pump is used to, to, to put together very large uh, LED screens. And, you know, there's so much critical fastening that happens these days so critical fastening means that the screws have to be in uh, with exact precision so you know whether that be in laptops very much in automotive very traceable so you know again we like to say that we contribute to just about everything that you see uh, in this picture so you know again i think we do touch your life every day but uh, you probably don't know so much about us which is what we're we're here to do today um i'm just working on one screen so i'll click into it in a second but if you do have questions please please do uh put those uh you know do do put those in the chat love to to take those and uh, uh, get it really really interactive um, 
we're going to talk more about it a little bit, our purpose, you know, our ideas and technology empower our customers to grow and drive society forward. This is how we transform the future. Uh, and as a company, we talk about the three core values that we have very short, our three core values, innovation, interaction, uh, and commitment, of course. So, you know, very, very innovative company. One of the most, uh, uh, you know, in our in our world, we put more into research and development than any other company. Around 3% of our revenue goes into R&D, which again, this is the sort of thing you can find at annual in annual reports. So please do check it out. We're, we're pretty proud of that, of that fact. Um, a little bit of the history, 150 years, you'll like this. I'm about to go. I'm not going to read every bullet point, and then I'll end up reading every bullet point. But as I mentioned, today is our 150 uh, first birthday. Uh, where does Atlas Copco from? Originally, the company was named Atlas back in 1873, uh, which is named after the Greek Titan, of course. You can see in the top right-hand uh, corner. Um, uh, and then we become Atlas Diesel a little bit later. And since 1956, we've been Atlas Copco which is really derived from our Belgium subsidiary. You can see it's an acronym of a Compagnie Pneumatique Commercial. So that's where COPCO comes from. So the Greek Titan uh, uh, and then uh, the um, uh, acronym of our, of our Belgium uh, subsidiary that does all of our compressed air. Um, the other fun fact, you know, we've actually got a dinosaur named after us, completely true. You can Google it. So in 1984, they discovered uh, in Australia a new species of dinosaur. And of course, I wasn't there at the point, but uh, I come up, uh, the, the legend has it that they come up and they said, OK, we need to make a name for this. And it was surrounded by Atlas Copco equipment. So they called it Atlas Copco Saurus. So, you know, if you hopefully one day you get to join the company in our store, we have uh, for employees, we have the little plushes of the dinosaur. And, uh, you know, it's uh, it's a great thing that, that kids love. Um, we've also run our own uh, charitable organization, Water for All. I talk about that uh, a little bit later. Um, you know, very stable company, I think in 151 years, the group would have had 13 CEOs. And Wagner Rego there, you see, will become the 13th CEO uh, in April. Um, and I touch on it again, that we're one of the early adopters in, in science-based targets, which is a great initiative, comes out of the Paris Climate Agreement. So we have committed to... Um, you know, to the to the CO2 levels that we need to do to keep global warming below uh, one and a half, one and a half degrees, uh, which is in line with the Paris Agreement. And, uh, you know, the, the, the big difference, I would say, about science based targets in simple terms compared to any of the others you see is that as we grow, we still have to emit less carbon. But whereas often with other targets, as you grow, as long as your carbon is reducing as a percentage, then, you know, that's OK. And you're moving a step in the right direction when it comes to uh, when it comes to uh, um, science based targets. You know, no matter if we grow the company 200 percent, we've still got to stay within our carbon target. So the, the facility that, that I'm in now, you know, generates 60 percent of its power from the roof in terms of solar. So you know things like that are, are super super important to us um yeah some of the fun facts i touched on maybe them a little bit you know every third car in the world is assembled with products and solutions from atlas copco our compressors are used to brew around 50 percent of all the industrially industrially produced beer in the world you're very welcome i think that's a great application our vsd compressors have, have saved the uh the the same uh electricity as the annual uh, consumption of paris it takes up to 30 atlas copco screws to keep everything fastened in, in your smartphone and i mentioned about vacuum you know touch screens uh there's mike just uh entered actually so i'll, I'll switch over to to Mike here in a second. 90% uh, of all the flat screens in the world are manufactured using our vacuum pumps. Um, you know, I don't want to make us feel old, but we were invented before all of these things. Can you believe it? And talk about safety. Look at that toaster in the bottom right hand corner. I don't think I would fancy using that these days, especially not for my kids. But again, just to speak a little bit to our longevity that Atlas Copco was uh, was uh, Atlas Copco existed way before any of these things that you see on the screen. 
Um, yeah, a few facts and figures. This is the end of 2022. So uh, it's grown a bit since the annual report comes out next month and we will update it. But turnover in excess of 13 billion. Um, we made 30 acquisitions in 2022. So very uh, progressive company when it comes to growth and development. We're in 180 countries, four business areas, 23 operating uh, divisions. Um, and if I look at those quickly, you know, there's the four business areas and every business is completely focused on specific industries, you know, so if medical is your thing, as I mentioned, we got medical gas solutions, uh, gas and process is very much into oil and gas, uh, the industrial technique business is very much into automotive assembly, aerospace, critical fastening, vacuum technique, hugely into the semiconductor business and, and lots more applications. And our power technique business is very much based around construction and portable power and solutions that get delivered straight to the customer. So whichever kind of, you know, whichever kind of business floats your boat, I promise you, you will find it within this, this group of companies. Um, yeah, we don't need to, to dwell on that one. I mentioned global presence as well. So, you know, I, uh, as I mentioned a bit with my journey, I started in the UK. I was in France for a bit. I've been in Belgium for a bit. I've lived in the US. I've been fortunate to travel to Asia many times. So, I mean, again, if you're someone that looks to travel, uh, this is a great company for you. Global mobility and indeed national mobility is super important to us. We're very much a mission driven company. So you get a mission, uh, uh, which is usually last between three and perhaps up to five years. Once you complete the mission, you find the next mission within the company. And the statistic we like to use is 85% of our managers are, are promoted from within. So, you know, I've often said at these meetings, you know, and, and, and various other ones, like it's such a great company that find your entry point and your entry point is maybe not what you, you know, what you really, really want right now. But I promise you, you know, if your goal is to lead a business unit in South America or something like that, just to throw something out there, it's a great company that gives you the opportunity to do that. Take the mission, uh, do well in the mission, take the next one. And again, we we, we are very much into global uh, mobility that uh, once I take a breath here in a few minutes, Amy or, or, or Mike or somebody can can speak to. Yeah, I won't dwell too much on our targets, but I just want you to give you the takeaway that we are a very sustainable, very ethic company, uh, really into doing the right thing. Um, and this talks about science-based targets, which I mentioned it's absolute numbers. And the other thing I should have mentioned is that we're measuring emissions all across the, the value chain, both what we use um, to, to make our products, what we use to deliver our products, and indeed what our customers use. So, you know, if you think of a compressor, 80% um, of the cost of its, 80% uh, of its total cost of ownership would be in electricity. So, you know, we're completely focused on making products which consume 20, maybe 30% more uh, electricity than, than competitors or like-for-like or -like products. And we measure that so that we can say, okay, Okay, by selling 100 machines, just to throw a number out there, for every 100 machines we sell, we've been able to reduce our, our emissions uh, by X percentage. Um, yeah, there's a video again that will explain a little bit more about what we do, but uh, I will not uh, dwell on that right now, but I certainly might, might come back to it at the end. Um, we have 115 locations across the US, so the map is much more densely populated than it is now. Don't think from this that we don't have anything, you know, in the middle. And I just wanted to show two slides. You'll see the whole picture uh, here in a little bit. So this is where our headquarters are. This is where typically manufacturing locations are. We have a lot of sales and service operations as well throughout the US. But these are the ones that are branded with the Atlas Copco brand. And here's the list of the ones that are branded with our other brands that are present within the United States today. So a lot of Edwards facilities that you see uh, specifically on, on upper, upper Northeast and, and Northwest. Uh, and you can also see, you know, where the concentration of our sort of facilities are. So it's these locations where we typically manufacture things and have warehouses. But if you're looking for mobile service technicians, which is a job with really heavily recruiting for uh, and, uh, you know, sales and service roles, they really do happen remote. Uh, we're around 7,000 
American employees now uh, just in the US. And again, I mentioned it's about 115 locations. We've got about 4 million square feet. This is really just showing you the, uh, uh, the scope of where our, for want of a better term, major operations are. Um, another video that we've got, again, I'll, I'll post these into the link and we'll get into a QA and a in a bit. And if we want to see uh, these video, if we have time for these videos, we'll show a couple. This one, as the title would suggest, just talks very much about our uh, diversity and inclusion initiatives and our culture. Uh, it's made by our people. It was made without a script. It's only 60 seconds long. I think it's uh, I think it's a great video, actually. So uh, uh, at the end, I might come back and uh, and play that one. Um, also with our service text, you know, we, we've got a series of um, uh, we've got a series of, of videos that, that talk a little about our service text. And just looking at the time here, what I'm going to do is I will actually play this one for you. I think it's only about a minute and a half. So I get a little sip of water and we're here from Cordell. Paul, I'm not sure if it's just me, but I can't hear the, I'm not going to check from Rachel or Renee. Can you hear the sound? No, I cannot hear the sound. Okay, Paul, you might have to uh, stop it and then pull down your screen, reshare it, but you got to hit that share sound button when you share it. Yeah, you sorry, it wasn't, your slides. yeah, it wasn't coming through the audio, right? Correct. Yeah, I had a feeling, sorry, yeah, I, uh, uh, I can only hear the video in my app. Uh, uh, my earpiece but again i'll share the link you can you can certainly watch that at your uh, uh at your leisure as well um let me go to the next one there we go so you know i mentioned a little bit about this so um if they, if you want to hear from if you want to hear a little bit more from the people definitely google atlas copco meet the people the link will come up uh and and you there's i think 15 or 16 short five-ish minutes kind of podcast with our people that talk Talk about us and our culture there's many veterans there that are also on that podcast and then in the top right you can see if you google atlas copco sweden's best kept secret that's a really interesting podcast that was made by a business publication in the us which really talks about atlas copco and our strengths and what we do so if you're looking for a couple of follow-ups and to learn more then uh, very much uh, take uh, take stock of that one and you know this little um tube map as it were that we show is just talking about you know that you uh, you can really drive wherever you want in terms of the different businesses you know we're a company where it's very possible to go from being a service technician to a sales manager to a product specialist to a business line manager we're very much a company as i said that can take you from uh north america to europe or to asia or to wherever you want to go and we're very much a company that can take you from you know starting let's say as an employee to a supervisor to a manager to a team leader to a regional manager to a to a general manager and even to a president so if you take uh, those you might remember i mentioned that um Wagner Rego, who's Brazilian, uh, is going to be the new CEO, starts in April. He started 28 years ago in Atlas Copco, Brazil, as a trainee engineer. So that's his journey, 28 years ago in Atlas Copco <clears throat> as a trainee engineer. So you know, if you start, uh, if you started today, who knows where you could be in 28 years. You go to the next one. I think we're just about done. Uh, I got some benefits examples here, but I'm gonna I'm gonna get Amy to talk perhaps a little bit more about our benefits, and then I'll also talk um, a little bit about water for all. So I just stopped the screen share there for a second. So just before I I I ask uh, Amy a couple of questions, Mike Iacino, are you there, Mike? Yes. I am. Mike is there. So, you know, Mike, if you wouldn't mind, I mentioned to the group earlier, of course, we're talking to um, uh, a group of, of folks currently in the military. Most are, are transitioning out within the next six months or so, something which you did. How many years ago, Mike? Tell us a little bit your story. Yeah. So, you know, um, very young, went into the military, uh, made a career out of it, 24 years. Um, I wasn't really looking for a job in a compressor company. I opened up the phone book and pointed in and hit Atlas Copco. And after 24 years in the Navy, 
uh, I decided I really didn't want to lead people anymore. I just wanted to kind of be a technician, tell me what to do, where to go. I'm happy doing that. Um, that journey started in back in 1993. So I've been with that was Copco now 31 years. And as Paul mentioned, um, advancements and opportunities are pretty much endless. Uh, I was only a technician for about three to four years before I started getting tapped on the shoulder. Hey, we'd like you to go do this. Why don't you go to Chicago, be a service manager, go to the West Coast, be an aftermarket manager or regional manager. So I've pretty much have worked in all the opportunities in the different regions. And then I became the VP of uh, what we call our CT operations service. And I did that for several years. And then uh, as I'm starting to get older, I wanted to kind of wind down a little bit. So I took a new opportunity to become the vice president for tech support and uh, training. And I've now been doing that for probably seven years. Um, again, there's still opportunity out there if I want to take it. Uh, doesn't mean it's with that Copco. It could be with another brand or it could be in our organization just in another country. It just depends on what I want. Uh, I've never looked back twice. So as you can tell, I've only had two jobs in my life, the military and this. The transition was very easy because the company uh, really looked out for us that were coming in and wanted to make sure that our transition went as smooth as possible. Um, okay, when I came in 31 years ago, there wasn't a lot of military in the company at the time, but it's definitely growing every day. Uh, so there are a lot of technicians, uh, product managers, other roles that have veterans in it. And they seem to be very, pretty happy at this point. So. Mm. Absolutely. And so, Mike, you mentioned, so you uh, just tell us a little bit about your mobility. I mean, you mentioned Chicago and the West Coast, but just just tell us so a little I, bit about that. Yeah. So I started out as a technician in the Chicago, northern Kentucky area and then was asked to move to Chicago to become a planner and a assistant service manager. Then a few years later, I was asked to go to California where we did an acquisition and take over the acquisition. Uh, and then before I knew it, I was being tapped on the shoulder to go to Houston to run the South region as an aftermarket manager. And then I was asked to consolidate and we moved that office to Dallas. Uh, I was there a few years and then I was tapped on the shoulder one more time and asked to go to Holyoke, Massachusetts, where our corporate office used to be. So I was being brought into corporate office to set up the the new CTS aftermarket business. And then I was there a very short time because I told them I didn't want to live in Massachusetts. Uh, so the opportunity came up and I moved back to California again and took over the region as an, another aftermarket manager. Uh, was there about four years and then uh, was asked to come to Rock Hill to actually do marketing again. But when I got here to my surprise, they had a different plan for me. And I was introduced as a new VP for operations. Um, so it's been a good career. I, again, I can't complain. Um, it's, it's gone smooth. A lot of support from everybody around us. Uh, I've worked very close with Paul um, and a lot of the other colleagues. So just know that if the decision is made to come to to Atlas Copco, you'll have a lot of support from a lot of different people. Very good. Thank you, Mike. Um, yeah. And then um, I'm sure there might be a couple of questions here in a set, Mike. So if you don't mind holding on for a bit, that would be great. And then, um, Amy, if you don't mind, can I can I turn it over to you just to talk a little bit more about what it looks like to start at Atlas Copco and maybe some of the benefits or the highlights, if you like, when it comes to to our people management and, and, and our HR initiatives. Absolutely. Thanks for uh, giving me a couple moments here to chat with you, Paul, as well as everyone else who is on the call. So quick background on myself. Um, I, my name is Amy Spansky. I do work here at Atlas Copco over in our industrial technique and automated assembly division. Uh, I am based over here in Auburn Hills at our headquarters. 
I've uh, been with the company for about two years now as one of the lead recruiters for both white collar positions as well as some of our blue collar or manufacturing types of positions. So a couple benefits of being with Atlas Copco um, from just a general overview, like culture side, things like that. Um, one thing I have noticed uh, for, for being an employee here is one, um, they give you work that actually has meaning. So even though we are a large company, our different uh, sections are broken up in such a way where your work can be seen, your impact is seen, um, simply because the different divisions have smaller pockets of people scattered throughout the country. So there's a lot more collaboration. There's a lot more face time with, say, VPs, uh, people who are in different positions that might be in a higher level that you may not have been able to interact with before. Um, and then the other part of it, I really enjoy the trust that they give to the employees too, speaking personally from myself. And then, of course, um, I really do think that, again, the trust is nice simply because people want to feel like adults when we come into our position. Uh, no one likes to have a micromanager by any type of means. Um, so, again, being here as an Atlas Capital employee, no one covers. Uh, your work does mean a lot. You do see the impact of it. And then, of course, on the benefit side of Atlas Copco, again, I work within the industrial technique division, so I can speak to that a little bit more, uh, not necessarily benefits for the entire company. So for industrial technique here, um, first and foremost, we do offer a wonderful 401k setup. Uh, it does have up to a 6% company match. And of course, if you're one of those people where you're like, eh, I'd rather keep my money, I don't want to contribute, we do go ahead and automatically contribute 3% out of our own pocket into your 401k to kind of go ahead and get that started for you there. And then in addition to that, other benefits, we do start off with about 15 days of paid time off per year. That's vacation. Uh, so you don't have to use that, you know, as PTO. It is specifically for you to go ahead, kind of kick your feet up, take some time away from work, decompress, and enjoy time with friends, family, and of course, traveling throughout the world. Outside of that, we also offer unlimited sick time, sick leave, and then there is an additional 10 days of paid uh, company holidays. And then outside of that, of course, we also offer medical insurance. Now, I know some of you may be keeping your uh, medical insurance as well as some of those other benefits through the veterans program or through the military. But of course, we do offer that here if you are interested in potentially moving to something different, very comprehensive. And then outside of that, couple other tidbits here. We're very welcoming when it comes to all veterans, hence why we are matched up here with the Heroes Make America program. Um, myself, along with Paul and a couple other members here on the call, uh, we are heavily involved within the program. I've gone to a couple of the on-site um, career fairs, lunch and learns, things of that sort. And then, of course, if any of you guys and gals are planning on attending the virtual career fair this Friday, I will also be online there going ahead, giving another presentation about Atlas Copco, and then of course, providing you with more of an in-depth touch um, or more of an opportunity to chat with myself as well as some of my other colleagues regarding the positions that we are offering. So we're really looking to revamp with that uh, program this year and hopefully get some of you guys and gals nicely transitioned into a couple more positions here with our company. Very good. Thank you, Amy. Um, yes. <laughs> Why don't we jump in? No, that's perfect. Thank you. So we might, yeah, exactly as Katie just said. Let's let's go ahead with some questions, maybe again, or we, you know, just a couple of videos we, we can watch. I see that the the links will put in the uh, the chat, which is great. Uh, so that they're at, at your leisure. But who has some questions for us? You guys want to start to drop in your questions let me go ahead and put me and paul back up on the screen so you can see us and we'll leave amy up also um so i might actually ask you paul because i've gotten this question before if you don't mind sharing possibly the website so i've got questions like wow so many brands how do i search you know for jobs across all these brands is there one place i can kind of search for them all? do you mind demonstrating on the website uh, either you or Amy, kind of how they navigate that um, to help with their search. Uh, I do not mind at all. Great question. So let's um, blah, 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 let me click on share. So, you know, uh, of course, um, uh, the the website, the, the website is atlascopco.com. You should be easy, able to navigate to the work with us section. 
Um, the short link is atlascopco.com forward slash start your journey. So, you know, when you're on this page, we've got many of the uh, the videos, you know, you can, of course, see the, the 150th, for example. We, t we talk a bit, a bit about this application as well, where you can read a lot more about uh, the things that we do. Here's the, uh, the videos that we looked at too. So all available on the one page. But the key one is that if we go to available jobs, and so uh, there are some changes coming, right? But it won't affect what I'm gonna gonna speak to you. So on on this link on atlascopco.com, you do have all of the jobs that are available here, no matter which brand. So it's already filtered uh, into the US. Um, so what you can do here now, as you say, if you wanted to look for a specific brand, you could uh just for example um so you can look for a specific brand i'd recommend maybe not to be honest with you because again look more for for what you want to do so if you're looking within uh within jobs uh, if i pick arizona so uh, a couple of things about the jobs when you look um and of course you can search for some keywords and you can search for specific functions and um so uh, when you look at the job, the first thing that you'll see is always the brand. So this is with Edwards Vacuum. Uh, you'll see the state where it is and and, and uh, the town, the city. And then it will tell you, you'll see here, if I find a couple of examples, you will see on-site, hybrid or remote. So on-site, as the name suggests, is really that uh, you're expected on-site. Um, I, I, as we're speaking generally because we are decentralized and it can be a little bit different. So, for example, if you're working um, in our assembly, if you're working in assembly, an on-site job is likely to be five days a week. If you're working in an on-site job in a product marketing role or maybe a technical support role, it will depend, but there's bound to be a remote element part to that job. So, you know, I myself, I typically work four days in the office, sometimes three and one or two at home. Uh, and many of my colleagues do the same so really depends but as a generalization if you're working if it says on site uh and you're working in a uh, you're working in uh, an office environment there's some sort of element of flexible working depending on the role and if you're working in, in in a factory or in warehousing or something like that then of course that that is less so because the job can only be conducted on site uh, you'll see remote. So a good one will be all of our service technician postings. They will say remote. So you really are based out of your 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 house and you travel to customer sites. Depending on um, depending on uh, where you are uh, in the US, there's maybe a uh, a location where uh, you pick up parts or something like that, like an Atlas Copco location. But for many of those locations, they're delivered directly to the customer site. So you know you uh, the service team will confirm the parts are there. You drive, you know, to to the uh, the customer, uh, and and you you fix their you, you know you fix their, their their issue, or you do your preventative maintenance. Sales as well would be a remote job. You're based out of your house, and you travel within the territory. Uh, and then where you see hybrid, um, hybrid is very much, um, uh, you, you know. So for example, maybe your your office is four or five hours away, and you're there two or three times a month or once a month or you know it really depends based on the need but you're expected to be in the office for a certain amount of time but you know typically that might be once or twice a month you know so in my current role for example I'm really hybrid because my my boss actually sits in New Jersey uh, and I go to the New Jersey office every month you know sometimes once sometimes twice but depending on the need they you know could be three or four so I'm really a uh, a hybrid worker so here's the way to uh here's the way just to navigate and, and you can see the different jobs and you know based on that uh, mike to give you a heads up why i've got you is that our biggest need is within mobile service technicians so you know and and mike why don't i think no one because you've been you've been you've had just about every position in that. no one could explain it better than you so tell us what a mobile service technician really does and what the job's all about yeah so for a service technician it's it's pretty it's pretty simple really um so first off you come on board we will make sure you have all the necessary training to do the functions of that job. Um, you know, that job includes not just preventive maintenance, but it also includes major repairs, major overhauls. Uh, it has electronics involved in it, electrical, 
Uh, so you typically work from your house, as Paul mentioned. Um, the job typically starts at 8 a.m. Uh, you arrive to the customer site. That job site could be two miles from your house or it could be 50 miles from your house. Um, and you'll arrive on site. You'll perform the duties that are uh, identified in your work order, and then you'll return home. Now, there is an occasional, and I'd like to make sure everybody's aware of it, that you'll be asked to stay overnight, depending on how far away the job site is. So that job could be you travel on a Monday, takes you three, four hours to get there. You might get an hour's worth of work in that day. Then you work Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Uh, if you finish on Thursday, a lot of times you check with your office. They'll say, yeah, if you can do it. You can drive home. If not, we prefer you to stay until Friday morning, make sure nothing's wrong with the machine and to check it on your way out. Um, but the territories and the areas that you typically would be hired into would determine what that schedule looks like. Because if you're in a metropolitan area like San Francisco, Chicago, New York, that's more or less, you know, an eight to five going home every night type of job. If you're more remote, you live in Nebraska or Iowa, you could have typical travel times of, you know, anywhere from an hour and a half to three hours to get to a single job site. Absolutely. And Mike, just um, on, uh, just, um, I know this is a bit perhaps compressor focus, but just a little bit of word on, on the training that you mentioned and, and the Air Academy, for example. Yeah. So <clears throat> the first thing you do is when you report on board as a service technician, uh, you will attend a what we call a two week level one training program. And that's to get you familiar with the products, the company's history a little bit uh, and basic electric uh, electronics, our controllers. So really starting to know our products and it's called a level one certification. And then you'll return back to your region and they will sit down and do a training plan with you and say, you're in this area and our needs are going to be this and we need you to attend these classes. And those classes could be done over six month period or 12 month period. Uh, we just try not to compress them too much because it's a lot of information for anybody. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then uh, you'll go through that training. You'll the great thing is you meet a lot of colleagues from all over the U.S. And you'll hear a lot of stories and you can ask them a lot of questions, but everybody will help each other. It doesn't matter if you live in California, Alaska, Chicago, everybody reaches out to each other for help. Um, we have a technical support team that I run here, has 20 people in it. Uh, Paul was talking about the flex hours. My team's pretty much here Monday through Friday because we're providing service um, every day to everybody, our customers included. And these guys are specialized in different areas of the products. Um, so again, you, you'll have all the tools and access to knowledge and information you need to perform your duties. Yeah, and across the different businesses, I think in CT, we are a compressor, we have around 450 and across all of the businesses, well over 600 or maybe 700 of these technicians. And the reason we highlight them is, is one, because it's our biggest need across the US. And, and secondly, because I think it's a career that not many people sort of think about as, as an option. You know, they think about either being in a fixed location uh, with a factory and assembly or warehousing and making something or perhaps working in sales. But this is, uh, you know, this is a, a very um, I think rewarding role. I think it's, uh, it's, uh, you know, like it's, but it, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a high stress role a little bit as well. And by stress, I mean, that you, you know, Mike will attest to, you know, you imagine if you're at home and your HVAC's not working and the person comes around, right, you know, you're kind of standing next to them, you know, when's it going to get fixed? When am I going to be back online? And that's a lot of the role of a service tech, right, Mike, going into the unknown and just, just, just putting it right, you know? Yeah, the customer relation is very important for whether it's sales or our technicians, because our sales uh, team, they sell the first piece of equipment. It's the relationship and the quality of work that we do that sells the second one through our service team. So you have to build a, a great rapport and a trust with those customers. And from a service department, if you tell them they need something, 
They're going to believe you before they'll believe Paul Humphrey's walking in and tell me they need some. <laughs> Thanks for that. But he's right. He is right. I will give it to him. But uh, okay, um, Mike, thank you. Um, uh, a little bit, um, Amy, maybe from yourself. I mean, um, a question specifically, do you have jobs for learning disabled, socially uh, incompetent? I mean, just a little bit about the programs that we have or the considerations there, uh, if you don't mind. Absolutely. So I was also able to respond directly um, uh, to Robert, as well as Hannah and a couple others who ended up sending over some direct messages. So of course, Atlas Gecko as an employer, we do offer equal opportunities for everyone. So of course, per those guidelines, we do consider everyone based on their credentials. We do not go ahead and base any hiring decisions based off of any disabilities, impairments, things like that. And of course, we are able to pro provide reasonable accommodation. Uh, for those uh, who do have those specific needs. And again, it's kind of a general overview answer simply because we do look at this on a case-by-case -case basis. So I hope that provides a little bit of clarification, but if anyone's got any more specific questions, feel welcome to reach out to me individually via the direct messages. Very good, thank you, uh, Amy. Um, and yeah, I see you've answered lots of stuff and lots of links. Um, Katie, what, what else do we have in there that we may have missed? Do you see a question uh, regarding the supply chain logistics side of the house? Because obviously a lot of products are being moved everywhere. So if folks mm. are looking more on that supply chain side, um, can you talk a little bit about types of jobs um, that might be available, or the opportunities for them to look into at mm. each of the different brands? Absolutely. So I think, you know, our biggest our biggest sort of distribution center where that would apply is in Charlotte, uh, North Carolina. Um, I think that we don't, you know, we don't have our own fleet, as it were. Right. So we do contract when it comes to moving our our equipment around. So depending on the type of role you're looking at in, in logistics, especially maybe uh, a little bit li uh, limited, but, but we are a massive importer of products as well. So all of the business, and by import, I mean uh, a number of our products are made, could be in Belgium, and, and, and we export as well by the same token. So those jobs are available, but they tend not to be available uh, in every business. Uh, and a lot of that is done centrally because it's 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 quite a lot of competence. So most of our most of our kind of logistics jobs, a lot of them are going to be around uh, Charlotte, North Carolina. But what we do have again, if you put logistics into that job search, of course, it, it does it does come up with with what we've got. So we don't run our own fleet. Again, is is the thing to mention. But of course, we have a lot of um, uh, a lot of customs work, a lot of scheduling work, um, and and a lot of uh, you know trade compliance and things that we have to do when it comes you know when it comes to that. Definitely, thank you. Yeah, I was looking through the chat. Um, I do see some questions about location. You know, opportunities in Kansas. Um, how would you advise them to best look for that? Just on the website. Yeah, so as, uh, and, and I think Amy sent a direct message too. So when you're on that link and, and you can get to it the way that I did, there's also atlascopco.com forward slash HMA for Heroes Make America as a short link. Uh, and using that one, of course, you can uh, you can do it by zip code as well, but you just put in Kansas in, in the search uh, and, you know, looking at it right now, you know, and, and, and if you go back to the, um, yeah, if you go back to thinking about, about that map keep in mind that jobs for example in kansas most i would say just about all of those are going to be remote jobs so they're going to be in sales or service you know they're uh they're, if you if you look at logistics and those sorts of things that's really coming back to the map and where we have those those core centers of excellence and anything uh, uh anything that was kind of outside that is going to be yeah most of it's going to be in sales uh and and service because we you know if i take kansas this is an example. I think we have one or two satellite offices there, but we have no kind of major manufacturing location uh, at this point in time. Um, um, yeah, looking at the questions, I think we've I think we've answered them, Katie. So, so if there's, um, there's any more oh go ahead Bob. no no go on please after you that the dog let me know someone's at the door let's see i do have another question interesting yep 
So I think um, there's been some good feedback in the in the chat, um, some direct messages to me as well about interest in the company. Um, so I think the links that have been dropped, Amy, if there's any other one that you'd like to drop. Um, I'll go ahead and include some additional ones in the chat now. Look at that. You know, I think uh, if I could, like, you know, and 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 hopefully, you know, hopefully Julian is is one voice of many. But you know, Julian, I think you've, uh, you know, our purpose for today. You know, interesting company. I didn't even imagine potentially working for a company like Atlas Copco until the meeting. So, Julian, you have you have made an old man very happy today. Thank you. But uh, you know, that's that's wonderful. Uh, and 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 thank you for for saying that. And then I just. Um, I see someone put a question to me, so I try to answer it quickly. What would be considered the biggest challenge uh, in in your in your uh, in in your current job? Um, and and you know, for us, I mean, you know, the the biggest challenge in a communications is telling our story in a. I don't want to call it a cluttered workspace, but you know, in there, there's so many great companies in the U.S. and so from my point of view, it's really, you know, to, to make us stand out from the crowd and to try and impart, you know, uh, the passion, you know, Mike talked about uh, his career. We talked about ours, you know, I talked a little bit about mine. So, you know, the biggest challenge is really just trying to um, give people the, uh, the faith to take the, the, the faith to take that leap uh, and, and join us as a company, you know, and uh, again, you know, we're perhaps not a company that rolled off the tongue before the meeting, but our goal with this initiative that this is our second year and for many years to come will be that in the future that we certainly are a company that, that, that rolls, the, the, the rolls off the tongue. And then from a marketing standpoint, of course, it's personalization is our biggest challenge, you know, segmenting our audiences and making sure that we're given the right messages to the right people you know uh, we're not a homogeneous bunch so we need to make sure that we're uh, uh, you know we're changing and adapting as the market does but it's a great question so thank you for putting it and then julian for the compliment or let's say for making our day thank you very much again Paul and I know it's tough to talk about so many brands in one um in one meeting like this but like you said planting that seed to get them to start to look at the different uh job opportunities that are all the brands that are here um either in the U.S. or people are looking for. so um, we're just about out of time any last words from Mimi Paul uh, Mike any of you have any last words before I go ahead and wrap up our event today well, for me, really, I think I said it all. Amy, uh, any last words from your side? Or Mike, if you prefer. Sorry about oh. that. I was muted. Oh, okay. There you go. Oh, now we can hear you. Sorry. Amy. Perfect. Perfect. Um, but yeah, no, I was just going to say, um, of course, you know, we're always so happy to go ahead and participate in these events with all of you guys and gals. And like I mentioned earlier, in case anyone joined the call a little bit later, uh, we will also be participating, both Paul and myself, this Friday uh, for the virtual career fair. So I'll be, you know, having a bit more of an opportunity to speak with you guys more on a one-on-one -on -one basis, kind of address more specific questions pertaining to the jobs that I'm managing, uh, as well as, you know, what the pay rates look like, when we're able to get you guys started and working. Because I know that's always a big question, you know, from, you know, uh, the transition period, right, you know, hey, I've got a couple of months, you know, can you guys hire me? What does that process look like? So we'll be able to talk a bit more about that in specifics. And then of course, um, for my chat here as well, in case it got buried, I'll also be reaching out to all of you guys and gals as soon as we're off the call here via like a mass email, just going ahead and providing you all with the direct links to the positions that I'm specifically overseeing. That way we can go ahead and have more of an interest. And then of course, make it a little bit easier for you guys and gals when applying that way you don't have to go ahead and kind of dig for all these different positions and say, hey, is this yours? You'll have a direct connection for, with me, my email, everything like that. And then we can go ahead and potentially schedule some additional interviews. Thanks, Amy. Mike, mm -hmm. anything in, in closing? Uh, no, just thanks for the opportunity to be able to share with you um, my experience with that was Copco. And um, I hope you all take that leap. As Paul says, I don't think you'd be disappointed. Uh, it's a, again, it's a great company, a lot of great opportunities, um, a lot of good benefits with our company. So I look forward to hopefully meeting some of you one day and uh, know we're all here as a team to support you. 
Thanks, Mike. Thank you all for being with us today um, and talking about Alice Kupko and, and giving all this great information. So I want to just remind some folks as some next steps, right? So make sure you do explore um, Alice Kopko's website. It's the best place to one-stop shop for all the brands. You can go through, filter through all the different brands, positions, locations, uh, fantastic resource. So make sure you check out the website. Make sure you connect with both Atlas and Heroes Make America on LinkedIn to follow up on any future events, more information, um, and anything like that. And then also connect with the teams. Amy provided her email address. We've got Paula here. We've got LinkedIn addresses in the chat box. So make sure you connect with all of our teams. So thank you all for participating today. Hopefully you filled out that poll before you head out. Um, and then join us in two weeks as our next Heroes Connect event. On Wednesday, March 6th, we do have the big band-aid and lots of producer of many healthcare items, Johnson & Johnson, will join us in two weeks. So thank you all for joining us today. Uh, we will see you next time. That's it. Have a great day. Thanks, everyone.